Welcome back to Reef and Sale. My name's George Isted, the silent boat butler. This is a Contessa 32 from the mid 70s that is with me for a fairly big refit. This is the Project Lottie. If you've been watching the series, I'm finally back on board and getting on with some work on her. In this episode, I'm going to be doing some work internally on the boat. There are some structural repairs I need to do on the starboard side and some structural reinforcement that I'm going to do down the port side just to add a little bit more structure into the boat. Keep watching and I'll take you through the process. If you've been watching this series you'll know that I've done quite a lot of work already on this boat so on the bottom she's had a full osmosis treatment because she was very very damp and blistered. Internally I've had the old floor out which was disgusting, taken the old water tank out, put a new water tank in. New subfloor is down, new step, which you can just about see there, is down, and I'm going to be laying a teak and holly effect floor over the top of that with solid wood. But before I get on with doing kind of beautification work inside, I want to finish doing all the kind of dirty work in terms of grinding and sort of laminating work on the boat. So what I'm going to be doing uh, next is I'm going to be putting some more structure into the side of this boat. This boat has actually not been abused in terms of, um, I don't think it's been raced to death or anything like that. There's no major structural issues with it. But on these boats, there is kind of a known weak point slightly on the original build of these boats on the port side down here. Most of them are okay, but one or two of these boats have had a slight issue where there isn't enough structure on this side. And the, if the boat's really been pounding hard, offshore in big waves and I've had this issue on my own Contessa many years ago um, it can just push in um, on this side a little bit. So what they do on new Contessas and what has been retrofitted into a number of original build 70s Contessas is to put a bit more structure in this area here. I'm going to do that by removing this top here and I'm going to be laminating in a kind of fore and aft stringer that goes all the way along behind this piece of wood, but it's gonna tie in the galley bulkhead that's just out of shot there with the main bulkhead there. Before I can do that, I've got a whole load of grinding work to do to prep all the surfaces and to remove, need to remove this top here as well. I've already done some strengthening in the boat. This piece of furniture has been out and uh, been modified, so that is all kind of glassed in down there, back into the bulkhead, back into the hull and the forward edge of this has also been glassed in. I'm yet to do the glass work in that piece of furniture there which is helpfully just out of shot but um, I'll be getting on with that as well. So here's a better look at that new kind of subfloor that has been put in there and there's the new step. Down here you can just see there's some slight delamination or failure of the secondary bonding in this area. You can see how the colour changes from that dark colour, that's still attached to the bulkhead, to that slightly lighter colour there, that's unattached. And if I came in with a screwdriver or something I can tap it with, you'll be able to hear the sound difference. So I've just grabbed a screwdriver and if I tap down here on the, uh, the side that is kind of like a slightly darker colour, you can hear it sounds like this. And that's all solid. But if I go down to here, it sounds different, it sounds a bit more hollow. I'll just do the comparison again. So there's big marked difference in how that sounds. It's the same just in this area here as well. I think this is pulled off as well. That's solid, that has failed. So I'm gonna grind all that area out and then re-laminate all that. So we're gonna restore the strength into that area. As I'm sure I've said before, these are generally pretty well regarded in terms of their original build quality. And it's just down this side here where sometimes the boats need a little bit more additional structure. So I'm gonna be grinding that all back and then putting in a fore and aft um, structural member or stringer. It's not really a stringer because it's gonna be a piece of plywood. It's kind of like a bulkhead, but a fore and aft bulkhead that's gonna go from that forward bulkhead all the way through there to the galley bulkhead which is there. Now that galley bulkhead also needs glassing back in because that was all detached and um, when I put the new floor in I've done all the grinding in there but I didn't do the glass work because I knew I was going to be doing lots of glass work here just to uh, do that little mod and improve the boat and make sure it is strong enough for whatever the owner may have planned for it going offshore.
There we go, that's step one. So I've removed that top piece just by cutting through the tabbing all the way along there, just to remove it. The screws, some of them came out, some of them just pulled out, some of them broke. Um, I'm gonna remove the rest of that woodwork there to make cleaning easier. It's all a little bit loose and detached anyway. So I'm gonna pull that out and then start grinding away to give me a nice surface that I can bond my new piece of plywood in all the way down the front there but I am also going to prep all the surfaces anyway because the whole lot will get flow coated uh, when I'm finished. And we can't put flow coat over paint, which is what has been applied to this at some point in the past. So I'm gonna grind all that back so we can have a nice flow coat finish. Now there's only so much internet to go around and I don't wanna waste it by showing you lots of me grinding polyester behind here. So I'm just gonna crack on with that, switch the cameras off, put some headphones in and I'll show you the end result when I'm done. A couple of days have passed because I've been busy doing some other stuff, but here is the area that I was prepping and grinding back to a clean surface. So the next part of the puzzle is I'm going to template the kind of longitudinal bulkhead stringer, whatever we want to call it, strengthening member that's going to run along the back edge of that piece of furniture there so i'm just going to use some really thin strips of plywood which i've got on the floor here and a glue gun so i'm going to kind of glue it all in place get the rough shape then i can take that back to the workshop cut it out on the plywood that i'm going to be using it's going to be 12 mil ply uh, and bring it back down do some final fitting and then that can get bonded in those three clamps are holding the first piece of plywood that i put in along the front there it's only kind of three mil throw away disposable plywood and then on that I have used my hot melt glue gun just to stick additional long pieces that come down and just touch the hull there and the same on the forward edge there and all kind of along the back so you can see what kind of shape I'm going for I can now remove that as one piece and then take it off to the workshop and cut it out on a nice piece of 12 mil which will go back in there. Back on the boat now and you can see there's my plywood stringer in place. I did have to give it a bit of a tickle in places with my little belt sander just because it was a bit tight in a few spots. So um, that's my belt sander there. You can see it um, really handy little tool just for doing all sorts of little jobs, little adjustments and also grinding back for kind of laminating. That can now come back out. I've got a bit more prep I need to do. There's just a the few odd little spots that need grinding back just to make them prep so there's a little bit of glass there that's kind of hanging off and I've got the same over in that corner I want to clean right down here which I couldn't get any tools into so I'm just going to sand that back manually you can't see it because the plywood's in the way but there's some um, muck there that needs to be um, cleaned up there's a great big hole there I think so that I can lay up glass against something what I'm going to do there is cut out a little circle of plywood and stick it in there and then I can reinforce that when it's all glassed over as part of the laminating that's going to happen shortly. Here you can see I have done the first initial bond of getting the plywood stringer, I'm going to call it a stringer from now on, in and uh, I've put kind of a fillet of material all the way around so that I've got something to lay glass up to. Also at the back end there, you can see where there was a hole and that has been uh, filled with a little circle of plywood that's been bonded in there as well. So again, I can lay glass up to that to strengthen it all up and that'll be all good. So I am going to start laying up some glass. I have pre-cut some combi mat. So this is Biax on one side and then sewn to that is chop strand mat. So I'm gonna go in initially and put in a few layers of that combi mat. And then on top of that, I'm going to put some further layers of just CSM in on top. So I've pre-cut a bunch of glass. That is all ready to lay up. I've not cut up enough to do the whole job, but I've done enough to get started with. And then I'll see how far I get and how much more I need once I'm underway. I will set up a camera somehow so that you can see that being laid up on a time lapse. So cue the music and I'll get cracking.
just about enough of laminating for the day, but that has all been glassed in there. Same down the back there and uh, in that locker as well. So that just needs to completely cure. It's got a slightly white color to it, actually. I think that's a mixture of the light reflecting off it. If I put my hand in front of the light, it goes away a bit. But um, the roller I was using was making kind of what I'd describe as micro bubbles in the resin as I was rolling it out, which was slightly annoying, which makes it look a little bit like it's not fully wetted out. It is absolutely 100% fully wetted out. It just looks a bit like it isn't, um, but it's gonna be um, plenty strong enough. So I'm gonna let that cure overnight. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and then work out what I'm going to do in terms of locker tops and supports for locker tops, but um, there's gonna to have to be some additional supports put back in there to replace the ones that I took out. I might even be able to partially use the ones that I took out, but uh, I will look at that tomorrow when it's no longer sticky and I can play with it and get some measurements and work out what I'm gonna do. It's now the next day and I've just been having a quick look at what I need to do here for the next step, which is to put some supporting structure in the top for the new locker lids. So I have got, this is part of what was in here, um, and it went kind of roughly there. And I'm hoping I can reuse some of this um, wood. I think it's dug fir. And uh, I have also got some more dug fir here, which is left over from when I put the floor bearers in um, for the new floor. So my plan is I want to have um, a piece of timber that runs from bulkhead to bulkhead up there. Um, but what I'm gonna do is probably reuse this. I can chop that off at the joint and there's enough material there to have two supports that go out to the hull from either side of where the table sits here. Uh, and then I can run a long one uh, fore and aft um, on top of those and I can notch out um, this material to slot over it. I've also got enough material here to put in some support framing along the front of this new piece of plywood that I've put in as well because the locker lids will need something to sit on other than this kind of 12 mil bit of ply. So I'm gonna use some of this, which is about uh, one three quarter inch by three quarter inch um, dug fur. So that should work. So I'm going to get a bit of a measure on and start cutting up some bits of wood. I apologize, I did do most of this work off camera. I have been busy doing a bit of wood butchery. So that is the framework that is now in place. That long middle piece isn't yet glued and screwed in, but the um, these ones here are, so that has been just sort of bogged into the hull. And I'm gonna lay up some glass in there just to make sure that's firmly attached. Same on that one. And then I've notched out the um, pieces of dug fur so that it all kind of locks together quite nicely. Just gonna chuck some screws in there with some glue and then I can template for the locker top. It's time to do some templating on here, and I'm gonna do this the same way that I've probably shown you before, either in this video or in an earlier one. I just use thin strips of plywood like this, which are kind of bendy, but as long as they've got a straight edge on them, I've just ripped these up on my table saw, and uh, I use them, put them around the outside of the shape that I'm trying to template, and then I use my hot melt glue gun, which I'm standing on, helpfully, and uh, basically just glue it all together. And in the end, I'll end up with kind of like a framework of pieces of this thin plywood, uh, which I can then take off, put on top of the plywood that I'm gonna be using to make the locker tops, draw around it, and uh, jobs are good and I just need to cut it out. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. I'll leave the camera running so you can watch me do it.
my template. So that is all ready. I've written a few little notes on it just to remind myself where things need to be cut for the locker lids, for the fixed bit and the opening bits. So that should now peel off, give me a really nice accurate template that I can stick on my plywood, draw around it and cut it out. I've just given all the edges a little sand on these new bunk boards and they fit really nicely. So well pleased with that. Next job is to take them all off again. I've got a little bit of glass work to do underneath, which is just to reinforce the, the structure that is holding the bunk boards up. And then that back bit there you can see along will get glassed into the hull, a few screws as well, just to hold it down. And then we are nearly done. The last little bits of glass work that I want to do here before I put the lid on are just to glass in uh, around these wooden pieces that are against the hull because I'm worried that if I just leave them bobbed in like this with this kind of polyester filler they are going to come off as soon as there's a bit of movement in the hull and so I think I'm going to glass those up but while I'm at it I'm very tempted just to lay off a little bit of glass on all the joints because um, it's just going to help hold it together it's not the most beautiful bit of woodworking that I've done here there are kind of fairly big gaps in these joints so um, because they're not going to be on show I wasn't too worried about spending a huge amount of time getting them perfect but if I just lay up a little bit of glass in all these joints here it just means that everything is going to be super strong and then um, hopefully no problems for many years to come.
I am just about done for the day and I'm just looking at myself and I can see the marks around my face where I've been wearing a face mask because I have been grinding away in the starboard corner of the main saloon just to remove some dead bonding. I was doing that because it took a little while for the new glass that I put in to completely cure. Let me swap the camera around and I'll show you what I've been up to. So you'll maybe remember in an early part of this video, I mentioned that some of the secondary bonding down here in this corner, which is on the starboard side had failed. So I've been in there grinding away, removing all the stuff that was loose. I've got a little bit more to do right down the bottom there. I'm gonna get in there with my little Dremel multi-tool just to grind that back and remove as much of that as I can so that I can then re-laminate in there, re-bond that main bulkhead back into the hull and also this stringer have very slightly detached so I've uh, ground all that back so that is ready for re-glassing. I was doing all that because I was waiting for the glass on the other side over here to cure. Because I only catalyzed it at 1% it took a little bit longer than normal for that to cure but it has now and I've just come back in and kind of cleaned up all the edges and made that look nice again so that is all ready for the top piece to be glassed in which I will do tomorrow. Was this little bit of extra glass work in here absolutely necessary? No, it wasn't absolutely necessary, but it took an extra hour, hour and a half or something like that just to prep it, put the glass in and then clean up afterwards. And I think that was worth doing for the amount of time that it required. Just means that there's a little bit of extra strength in there, which is always a good thing on all of those joints. So uh, that is all ready for the top to go on. But that's a job for tomorrow because I need a shower and to uh, de-itch myself from the grinding I've done. That's the same problem with grinding polyester is as much as you can put as many clothes on as you can. I wear a big coverall, but the dust still seems to get up sleeves and things like that. So I'm going to go and have a shower. <laughs> Well, I'm very pleased to say that this back piece is finally screwed down. So I've just chucked some screws in to make sure it's all aligned where exactly I want it. And then I'm gonna mix up some polyester goop just to go in this gap at the back here. Uh, and then once that's cured, I'm gonna lay up some glass. I'm just gonna use some chop strand mat um, to lay up some glass all the way down there and over this just to tie it all in. And then that is done. So um, I'm gonna go cut some glass.
Well folks, it is a spectacularly beautiful day here on the River Hamble and unfortunately, despite having a morning off, I do need to get back on with some work this afternoon. Now before I finished up here uh, the day before yesterday, I flow coated all of the port lockers, apart from a small area because I ran out of flow coat. Um, so that is all looking good. I'll show you that in a second. So the next piece of the puzzle for me is to go over to the starboard side, which I have ground out and prepped for glass and lay up some glass in there just to finish off that repair. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what I'm doing next. Here are the port side lockers all looking neat and tidy. That is all finished apart from that bit there because I ran out of flow coat but I'll come back and do that in a little while. On the other side I need to move some stuff. So here on the starboard side, everything is prepped. What I have done to start the process is I've put a fillet of thickened kind of resin in there and down the bottom. And then I've got something to lay up glass to. It's the same just along there because there's kind of a bit of a gap. So I thought I'm just going to fill that in and then I can come back in and lay up some glass. So I'm going to cut some glass and get laminating. And there is the repair completed. So that's all glassed in and the strength now of that area is back to where it should be. So I just need to let that cure. I'm going to go off and make a cup of tea now just to get the styrene out of my head because I've used a polyester laminating resin to um, do that. That's going to leave a slightly sticky finish. So I'm going to come back in with some flow coat over the top of that just to give it a kind of a, a, a non-sticky finish. Although this side is all going to get painted so that will give me something I can sand come back and then I'm going to paint everything. I'm painting it rather than flow coating it on this side because this has all been painted here previously and I can't put flow coat over paint and I don't want to waste the customers money spending large amounts of time kind of grinding and sanding all of that old paint off so we've agreed that in the areas where it's easy to flow coat like the port side over there we're going to flow coat and on the areas where it's going to be much easier and more sensible to paint that is exactly what we're going to do it's all going to be the same color I don't suppose anyone will particularly notice until they uh, kind of look at it really really closely um, but we're going to put um, boards in across here this boat previously had pipe cots under the berths which is kind of a canvas arrangement we prefer having boards under berths because it gives you a, a nicer base for your bunk cushions uh, when you're sleeping on them so we are going to be doing that I'm going to come in and template for the boards in much the same way as I did on the other side in a minute but first a cup of tea now the locker top on this side is going to be in two pieces and one of the problems that I have got is that in the middle here it's kind of unsupported and there's going to be a join uh, in the middle here so I am going to put uh, a plywood or a, uh, a piece of wood, a kind of a, a supporting piece in here between the um, bunk side and the boat, much like there is on the other side of the boat, um, just to stop it from kind of flexing when someone sits on it. So um, I'm using nine mil plywood, I think it is, nine or 10 mil, and uh, it doesn't flex much, but it flexes a little bit. So it just wants a little bit more support at the uh, middle here and right at the forward end as well, where there isn't currently any. And there are those two bunk boards in position. So I had to do a little bit of a sand just on the edges just to make them fit nicely, but they are a nice snug fit. I just need to put a support in right up at the far end there, one in the middle and one at the back end there against the bulkhead just to stop the bunk boards from flexing. Just fitted those supports that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So there's the one at the forward end. We've got a couple of pieces of plywood glued and screwed together, bonded in kind of there in the middle and there's the support at the back. So if I take my lids, I can now put them on and they don't flex at all. There we go, perfect fit. So I'm really pleased with that. I am going to bring this video to an end now because all I'm going to do uh, to finish this off is to lay up some glass just on this central um, piece here just to tie it into the hull 
and the bottom bit. I think it's pretty secure as it is, to be honest with you. It's bonded in, but um, uh, a little bit of glass just to strengthen it won't hurt because I've got to do a bit of glass work up there on the knee for the cap shroud on both sides because um, the new cap shroud U-bolts, the bar that goes through the knee, is in a different position. So I have filled the old hole. I want to lay some glass up over it before drilling the new hole um, so that I can get all those painted before I actually fit the U-bolts so that I'm not having to paint around U-bolts. Um, it's just much easier and I'll end up with a neater job. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that interesting. If you want to support the show, there is a link down in the description below. You might have to hit more or um, expand or whatever it is that YouTube say. Um, in there is a link to a PayPal account and any donations that come in to support Refit and Sale really are appreciated. Those of you that have donated, thank you very, very much. I don't mind what you donate. If it's just enough for a beer, that's good. If it's a little bit more, then fantastic. Um, it pays for new microphones like this thing, uh, better lighting, and eventually a better camera so I can shoot better video for you to watch. So uh, if you donate, thank you very much. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.